Well, it's finally the end of 2020 and time to have a look at the month ahead of January of next year. We will be looking, of course, at the whole year ahead later in January. So be sure to tune in for that in the middle of January. Of course, last time I found myself talking about January and about the year ahead for 2020, I spoke about astrologers expecting World War III, and I think we kind of got it, perhaps not quite in the form that we might have thought, but certainly, as I said in January of this year, the whole world will go into crisis, and it certainly did. And what that was all about was an unusual, once in 37 year configuration astrologically that is associated with a period of great hardship followed by social change. Astrology has got a lot to say about the slow development of social and political change. And in fact, most of the great big cycles that astrologers worry about are associated with the great big changes that happen in the world on a generation to generation basis, sometimes faster than that because of how politics works. Well, traditionally, astrologers have been more interested in a different cycle, and you might have even heard the hype all about it. It's this great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that happens next week on the solstice, which people have begun to talk about on social media. And, you know, you would think that it was the second coming, perhaps the first coming, the deus ex machina that we've all been waiting for, the beginning of a whole new age, and all sorts of the usual hype that we get, because unfortunately, actual knowledge of astrology has tended to fade away from the mainstream of our culture over the last few centuries, and so we kind of are left with the hype. So what we need to talk about first today is what to expect about this great conjunction. What does it really mean beyond the hype? The hype will tell you that it happens once every 800 years, false, and that it heralds the dawn of the Aquarian Age, false, and, well, I'm not going to list them all here. The most important thing is that this is a well-known once-in-20-year cycle. And classically, according to astrology, it represents the beginning of a new 20-year era. So, for example, of course, the last time this happened was in the year 2000. And it, it identifies the change of culture that happened as we went into the early 21st century. You might remember that the two most prominent, powerful, shifting kind of events that happened right at the beginning of the 20th century were in America, and that was the unusual battle between Gore and Bush that led the Supreme Court of the U.S. to decide the outcome of a U.S. election. And, of course, 9-11, which would happen within a year. And that would lead to the kind of very changed, somewhat unstable world of the 21st century that we've become familiar with. Indeed, there is a difference this time around. So every 200 years, the, the element of the signs that the conjunction takes place... Conjunction is when two planets come very close together. So the element changes, and so it's got a different kind of a quality to it. Simplest way to put that is, this time around it happens in the sign Aquarius, and it hasn't happened in an air sign like Aquarius for 800 years, and that's where they get that number, and it hasn't changed the element for 200 years. So it does that every now and then, which might represent some other kind of shift in the nature of that cycle, but we'll see more about what the cycle is all about and see what we can expect about those kind of shifts. It is a very close conjunction. In fact, it's very close every time. But this time, our eyes will be able to see how close it is. So much so, it might look so close to most people that without a telescope or binoculars, it will look as if it's one big bright star. Take out your binoculars, you'll see that two stars sitting very, very close together are Jupiter and Saturn. Certainly a sight to behold, and one that let the great astronomer-astrologer Johannes Kepler in the 16th century to suggest that this might have been what the ancients saw as the Star of Bethlehem around the time of 
Jesus Christ's birth. We don't know. We don't know exactly when he was born. And the closest at, to the time of his birth is in the year we call 7 BC. Perhaps that was it. We don't know for sure. And it has led people to kind of pump up the meaning of this grand conjunction. But history shows us a lot of what the meaning is and what astrologers have always expected about such a great conjunction. And in essence, it represents the clash of opposing forces. Saturn and Jupiter are very much opposing forces. Saturn constrains and is the force of conservatism, and Jupiter expands and is the force of, well, expansion into the new. And in order for the new to happen, it has to have a clash with the old. It's one of the ways that astrology says this is how social and political change happens. It happens pretty much only because of the clash between the old and the new. Now, over the course of 2020, because of that other once in 37 year conjunction that I mentioned, we've seen extreme circumstances building. This particular once in 37 years is about extreme oppressive forces, dangerous things, viruses, wars, all those things which bring us to the brink. Following that with the grand Jupiter Saturn conjunction has led people to think maybe that's the savior that gets us gets us out of it all. Well, it might change the theme a little bit, it might change the focus a little bit, but following the course of astrology, it really represents the logical next step that arises out of this year 2020. And beyond the issues of the, the virus itself and all of that, what we've seen in the world, partially related to the crisis that happened this year, is this increasing polarization of social and political forces. There can be no doubt. We see that in many places. It's epitomized in the polarity that we all see in the United States at the moment, but you will find it elsewhere as well, and certainly you'll find it here in South Africa. So what we have building in South Africa is essentially a crisis within the ruling party, who are now according to their own constitution, beginning to identify and pursue those that are accused of corruption. And because that is happening so high up at the level of Ace Magashule, and because it brings out such important figures like former President Jacob Zuma, it is gradually building into a crisis in the ANC, which indeed is going to lead to a clash between opposing forces. But certainly the seed is planted next week when we see those forces reaching ahead. And that is, of course, exactly what's happening in the United States. That's why it's such a great visible example for everyone to see how these forces work. So you have the situation where you have Donald Trump who refuses to concede the presidency, the new president, Joe Biden, coming in, and you see Trump's followers also refusing to concede the presidency. And in the worst case scenario, which is not the likely scenario, that could lead to a civil war. As I said, it's not really the likely scenario, but it again illustrates well how this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction works, where it tends to create greater polarization in whatever political forces are at play. So that's really how we can expect it to work. And indeed, we might even see a little bit too much of that greater polarization in our own lives. And that, in the end, is what's much more important about it. Although the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction alone doesn't herald any particularly noticeable change to us as ordinary people, and we need to look at our governments to see that, we certainly can ask ourselves as individuals, how do I deal with these opposing forces of new and old within me? Astrology says that the new will always win in any battle between the new and the old, because that's the nature of nature. That's the nature of growth and progress, for better or for worse. So really, the appearance of this conjunction in the sky is more than anything an opportunity for each of us to ask, where do I need to let go of what I really don't want to let go of? What aspects of the past am I clinging to that no longer serve me? What aspects of the new am I afraid of that I'm shying away from, that I'm denying? It's not a joke what's happening in America or anywhere else because it is really creating fundamental types of conflict that, as I said, in worst case scenario, could escalate into actual 
real conflict. And that's what we need to be a little bit afraid of as a result of the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction uh, relating to that. You know, although it doesn't represent the age of Aquarius, which if you were to accept that idea, which is not mainstream astrology at all, but Aquarius is also one of the most misunderstood signs, often painted as the sign of love, peace and hippies, because of the dude who wrote the hippie musical Hair, inserting it into his musical, but so, so unfortunately a lot of the popular confusion about the meaning of the age of Aquarius if it exists, is, is connected to the hippie musical hair. But what the sign Aquarius is often about is the individual versus the group, or the individual versus society, and the, the rising up of lots and lots of more individualism, which at first glance is not bad. It means kind of everyone gets their rights, and with the, the rise of increasingly small pockets of of individual rights and groups who get rights and all of that is fantastic by our modern understanding of equality. But when you look a little bit closer we can see some of the effects in 2020 that well describe the problem and that is this increased separation and individuality has broken down the idea of the humanity as a group, that we are all in this together. You know, that's one of the extremes that the corona crisis showed is that in some cases it meant we're all in this together and everyone wanted to help everyone else and people rushed to each other's aids, which was amazing. But certainly I think we saw much more of it's what I want counts more. Don't tell me what to do. I won't wear a mask. I won't do this. I won't do that. All this me, 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 me stuff. But, you know, as many astrological scholars argue, you can't divide history into 2,000 year periods. And when you do, it tends to focus around individual cultures. You can't say the same types of things happen to many cultures around the world because it just doesn't. And so that's why, classically, in astrology, there is no such thing as an age. And classically in astrology, we rather look at things like the Jupiter-Saturn cycle, not as things to do with great ages, but things to do with smaller ages. So one of the challenges for us in these next 20 years, with Jupiter-Saturn conjunction happening right at the beginning of Aquarius, is to think again, not only about the old versus the new, but about the me versus the you, or the me versus the us. And think about one of the things that humanity needs to get back to, is to find the way to be us again. Probably not something we can sort out in 20 years, maybe something that will take 200 years while this conjunction repeats every 20 years in one or other of the air signs, Aquarius, Libra and Gemini. But, and it's, we won't know where we end up in 200 years time, but what we can be sure is that once again, and as usual, humanity is going through an old versus the new and a me versus the us. And as long as we are conscious of that, and as long as we understand that in our own lives, we can play our own small part to ensure that the social changes and the political changes that such times bring, in the end, bring the improved, better society that we all aspire to, and that in some ways, Aquarius does represent. Aries, it looks like you've got a great way to start the year. It's all about a clean slate. This is time to wipe out the old, deal with the ones and for all, and start afresh. You're raring to go and it's all going to work for you. But there are some things that need to be a little bit cleared up. Great idea for you as the year gets going is just sit down and be clear about what you want to achieve for the first few months. Don't just launch into it because of the amazing developments that are actually going on. You are going to be able to achieve a lot, but it's going to work much better if you've actually got a plan. So have a plan. The other thing is that there are still some forces of opposition that you're going to have to deal with. And perhaps you're going to have to be careful not to go engage in any kind of a conflict, to step back, to step down, be calm. Don't let random, unexpected things or things you didn't mean to say scupper your whole new path which lies ahead of you from 2021. So you've got a great opportunity. Clear out the old and go forward. Taurus, there are some opportunities in the coming month to sort out your financial situation just as the year is getting going. And what a great opportunity to get that done once and for all. It's not a time where it's going to be easy to become completely independent in that regard. It does look like not only might you depend on others at this particular point, but actually 
it's still to your benefit to depend on others. So don't get into your head that starting afresh and starting a new means starting entirely on my own two feet. It's not always as simple as that. It also sometimes means that, well, one of the things I'm seeing about this year is that there are new things available to me and that there are new connections that I can make with other people that will advance me further. In fact, your chart says look far and wide. The best connections and the best input looks like it's coming from very far away. So that's overseas, that's online. Make the connection, make a bit of a partnership. That's going to help your financial situation and your goals for the year ahead. Gemini's, you can have too much of a good Gemini thing. And that is the usual too much going on at the same time. It's not too much of an issue because it does look like there's something ahead of you that you're hoping for, planning for in the year ahead that is going to be something to focus your energies on. Well, for January, you can set that up by sorting out what you can do for yourself and what's for you and what's for others. Because it looks like people who rely on you or people who depend on you kind of draining a bit too much of your energy or your resources at this time. For some people, of course, that's your children and you can't uh, cut any resources or dependence they have on you for that reason. But perhaps you need to sort out some matters with your kids to see who stands where. You need to be able to get on with what you need to do and you need to be able to deal with what you have to do with your responsibilities towards your children. But it's a really great time to focus to cut out what you don't need for the month ahead for the year ahead and use the month ahead to focus on what's going to get me what resources do i need to get my goals done cancerians it looks like you need to do a little retreat just to kind of get the year going in the right way spending time at home spending time with your close family spending time on your own all of these are going to work really well for you and under the circumstances it is kind of the perfect January to be doing that. While you're about it, also reconnect with your home. It's really a time to kind of refresh it. You know, we spent a lot of time at home in the last year, and for some of us it became a prison, became a hiding place, it became a quarantine place, became all sorts of things. And as we go into the new year, because home is so important to you and so important in your chart this time, maybe just make it back into your home and your special castle and all of those things you like your home to be. Great time for introspection, building your roots and going forward to a new year. Leos, you can set the year onto a whole new tone by taking charge. This is the year where it's all about taking charge. You need to call the shots over what's happening in your own life. You might have commitments or contracts or other things that are pulling from all sides and you probably can't do anything about that. But in so many ways, you need to be your own authority. In fact, you might need to act with a bit of authority that you don't necessarily feel that you have. Well then, act because they're going to be listening and it's going to work. Putting your foot down, calling the shots, all of those things are going to work for you. And it looks like there's going to be plenty to do with it. Whatever you're doing, whether it's something creative, whether it's something any, anywhere in your professional line, it looks like rapidly in January there's a lot on your plate that you're going to be able to deal with and that you're going to need to be able to draw lines between what you want and what other people want from you. Leos, it's all about you for January. Do it that way. Virgo, January is going to be a great opportunity to connect with something that you often forget because of your practical nature, and that's yourself and, of course, your spiritual path, your inner self. As a Virgo, you're so busy dealing with what needs to be done and what can show results, and you're great at that, and that's great. But you also need to take care of the inner stuff, and you don't seem to be giving that enough time. Virgo, you might be feeling drained or strained or taken advantage of or exploited at the worst. And now's the time to get all your energies back to yourself. For you, this is a great month to pay attention to spirit or soul or whatever word that you like to use for that inner you that you know and that is feeling a little neglected. And I don't mean the emotional child you. This is time to think about soul, to think what is my purpose in my life? How do I feed myself with that? And that's what enables me to help the world. It's time to get back to yourself. Libra, relationships, of course, are very important to you. 
but this is one of those times when you'll need to make sure that those important relationships are not standing in the way of opportunities that you have right now to grow yourself and expand yourself. Indeed, there may very well be new relationships and new friendships coming into your life at this time, especially people who are different than yourself or come from somewhere different than yourself. It's a great time to explore connections with people who are very different, but that doesn't necessarily only benefit your personal life, it could well benefit your professional life and it might be an opportunity to bring new ideas, new thought and start the year on a new note with respect to your business. But again, in order for that to really work, you need a sense of space space and freedom. Great idea to have a look. Are there little things in your relationship that are bugging you, that you feel stuck or hemmed in? Deal with those small things now in January before the year gets going you, and you won't feel as if your partner was standing in your way. Scorpio, you might be failing, facing your own inner dilemma and own inner crisis at this time. Part of you wants to just, you know, run away, be on your own, spend time hidden away. And part of you wants to be right out there doing your thing, which is not necessarily a social thing, but it is a professional thing. It is a great time to be putting your goals into place, but you're in the strategy stage rather than the action stage. There will be some action that needs to be taken, but mostly it's going to be difficult to deal with authorities or other others who can influence your path, who are actually in a position of power at this time. You need to take a pause and wait until February, and that's why you need to be strategizing during this time. Who can help me? Who's on my side? Who benefits me? Not to fight the battle, but so that I don't really have to deal with those that try and block me. So spending a lot of time strategizing, identifying the clear paths, and then with the help of others, by the end of the month, you'll be able to follow those paths. Sagittarius, if anyone needed a holiday right now, it would be you. And we've just come to the end of the holiday season. Indeed, it wasn't much of a holiday season. So maybe you need to also just get some space and either get away or get into space. And most Sagittarians are madly nature-loving people and that's the easiest way to do it. But you need to experience that Sagittarian freedom that is such a deep need. This is a great time, if you can get away, to do that. But to also connect with people and places from far off. Spending time in wide open spaces is great for your health at this stage and is also great to just get that sense of freedom that is so important to you. In other news, Sagittarians could also be starting to study something during the course of this month. So putting something new onto your plate is also a great way to expand your horizons or your sense of horizons. That's going to give you the sense of freedom that you need. Capricorn, there are so many conflicting forces going on within you that for once in your life you might even not know what it is that you want. And it's important to be okay with that. You don't always have to know what it is that you want. This is, of course, a great opportunity to look at the theme for the year, which is the old versus the new, and challenge yourself to move on. Capricorns are not good at moving on. and You tend to stick with old habits and established ways, and for the most part, those work for you. But this is the time when you find out that they really don't. So a little bit of courage is going to be required for you to act on the new in some way. Of course, what won't change is that the chart says you're going to need to act with authority. You're going to need to put your foot down and throw your weight around in order to be able to move forward. But it's not a free pass. The challenge is the only moving forward that's going to work is one that is in a new way in some way. And of course, one which does take other people into account. So align your goals with those of the world around you. That's how to find the new path. Aquarians, well, you already know, you guys are the epitome of the old versus new because the Great Conjunction is happening in your own sign. And not surprisingly for Aquarians, it raises the issue of the people around you. And this might be a time for a shake-up in terms of who are your friends really and who supports you really. You always have the struggle between being alone and being part of the group. Knowing that this is one of the themes that society is going forward with, over the next many years, you can get back to some of your ideals because that reflects some of your ideals. How do we create better community? Whether that's at the small level, like my family, my neighborhood, or my, my, my group at work, or how do we create larger community, maybe in some socially or politically oriented work that you're doing, or in some voluntary work that you're doing that is very much your type of style. So getting back to, as an Aquarian, how can I contribute to creating a greater sense of humanity? 
It's a bit of a cliche, but that's what grand conjunctions are for. Pisces, you probably have been feeling a little confused over the last month and all of this could be too much for you. And of course, there's nothing better than a bit of escape. Normally, escape is seen as a somewhat negative quality for Pisceans running away from the world. But this time around, it's probably quite a great strategy to do. The good news is that as the month progresses, the confusion lifts and you're in a much better position to identify goals and also identify your own feelings later in the month. What you then need to do is honor those own feelings and act a little bit more selfishly once you allow yourself back out into the world. It's a great time by the end of the month to attract attention to yourself in terms of what's required professionally. You might need money or publicity or customers or something like that. That's going to be really great for you in the late part of January. So don't be worried if the year takes time to get going. First the inner work, then you can go out into the world and they, they all respond. They're all seeing you. Don't forget to enjoy the sight of the Great Conjunction in the West shortly after sunset. Enjoy it, it contemplate its meaning, and I'll be here next week at the usual time. We'll be back in January with the Euro.